you can do Youth Sunday as long as you want. I mean, we had Jim doing worship. You know, anyone can do. We're all young at heart, right? Um, so now we're going to go into, um, I mean, we're going to share a little bit about Samuel School 2. And if you don't know what that is, Samuel School 2 is um, a program that the Northwest Yearly Meeting has put on for I don't even know how long. I was talking to uh, somebody there who said they went when they were a kid and they were a little older. So <laughs> uh, I really don't know. It's, it's for high school kids. So this person was older. They had to have been high school and they've gone on. So it's pretty long running program. Um, but what it is is, is um, well, there, there's Samuel School 1 and 2. And one is for junior high students and two is for high school students. And it's for a time for these students to come together and listen, uh, learn how to listen and discern what God is saying to them and listen for God's voice. And each church is um, encouraged to send uh, two to three students. Um, and the elders kind of select those students and they, they get to go over. It's, in, it's at Camp Telecom, um, which is in Newburgh. And so this year we sent st two students, Miranda Paz and Skylar Messick. Um, Skyler was unable to join us this morning. He has to work this morning. He, he works for the Parks and Rec Department of Meridian, so you can go look for him mowing lawns at some park somewhere sometime. But uh, Miranda is here, and she's going to share a little bit. But And then I'll talk a little bit, too, about Samuel School, because I went with them as well, and I've gone a few times. But um, we have a quick little video that kind of just shows um, some of the things that they did there, if, you've, if you're unfamiliar with the program. And then we will take this time to share a little bit about what it was like um, for her and for me over there. Oh my gosh, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> That's great. So hi, I'm okay. I'm Miranda, and 
Um, so Jacob asked me to talk a little bit about my time at Samuel School 2. And Samuel School 2 gave me the opportunity to learn and grow in my faith. Not only did I learn more about the Lord, but I learned new things about myself. My favorite part, besides the ropes course, as you see, I was really good at. Um, <laughs> um, uh, my favorite part was connecting more with the youth in the yearly meeting um, and making our relation relationships stronger. I've known some of them for a long time, like the girl who helped me get up on the ladder, that's my friend Maggie. We went to YQ together. And so, and then just other, other kids there I've known for a long time, but like interacting with them in a closer environment was um, really fulfilling. But a challenging part of Sammy School was um, taking what we learned in the classes and applying that to my daily life. Um, we had a lot of classes fit into a small amount of time and taking all of that information and sitting with it after class and trying to think what God wanted me to get out of that was challenging. And walking into it, I was like, oh, this weekend's going to be really stressful just because of everything that's happening with the yearly meeting. But then I realized, oh, the youth are really united. And so it just, it was all really good. Um, but at Samuel School, I learned more about my spiritual gifts. Um, I learned a new one, um, hospitality. I didn't think I had that gift, but here I am. <laughs> I'm hospitable, so if you want to come on over. Um, <laughs> just, I'll have to ask my parents first. But, <laughs> um, but I learned ways to put my other gifts to use um, in my life and at church. Um, my other gifts are leadership and compassion. So learning, I learned, we learned ways how to um, build those gifts and by building them, doing God's work. Um, what I didn't expect from Samuel School was enjoying solo time so much. Um, solo time was four hours by ourselves, quiet, just four hours. Um, and I had a spot by the lake, I don't know if we, it's a pond more, but it was, anyways. Um, I was there sitting and I, at first I was super overwhelmed with how much time we were given. So I was like, okay, what am I gonna do? So I took a nap, um, I read scripture, and I prayed a lot. Um, but what, uh, when Sammy, um, the leader, <clears throat> he came and got me, I remember thinking, that's it? I'm not done yet. I need more time. Um, but after that, um, getting there and after getting over, after being overwhelmed, um, I sat there and just sat with the Lord and I centered down and I just was like, all right, let's do this. And that's all the time. It really gave me some time to process everything that happened that weekend and um, I realized that I should do this more often like most of the time I'm just like oh yeah I talk to God but not for four hours straight with no distractions and so I really um, thought to myself like I need to do this more often without any distractions and it's really it just connected me more with God and um, it was hard <laughs> being by myself for four hours because I really like to talk and <laughs> four hours without talking to anyone but Jesus I was like all right it's fine um, but it was good so I just wanted to thank you guys so much for sending Skylar and I to Tillicum it was so much fun and we learned a lot and we built an amazing community with everyone that was there and we had a great time so thank you Um, so I'm just going to share a little bit more about Samuel School from my perspective. I went as a counselor, um, and this was my third time going. So it's the same every year, but so I've, you know, got a little more, um, I guess, intake on what it's like or whatever. And I really enjoy going. Every time they ask me to come counsel, I'm like, yes, because I think it's a really uh, unique program. It's a really interesting program for those kids that go, like Miranda said, four hours 
of alone time. Uh, it's not something that most people get these days. Um, and kind of a funny story about that is um, my wife works at Rocky Mountain High School, and she's gone to Samuel School before. She didn't go this year, but she works at Rocky Mountain, and that's where Skylar goes. And uh, I'm telling this story without him being here, but that's what he, that's what he gets. <laughs> uh, um, like the day before that they had gone, she saw him in the hallway and was like, are you excited to go to Samuel School? And he's like, yeah, I just don't really know, like, what we're going to do this weekend, but yeah, I'm excited. And she was like, oh, well, my favorite part is when we do the four hour of solo time. And she said that he was just like, what? <laughs> four hours of solo time? And he was like, well, if I would have known that, like, I don't know if I would have signed on for this. So I don't know if they intentionally leave that out of the promotional material or what, but um, it's just interesting, like, you know, I'm sure he still would have gone, but it is interesting to think like sometimes we hear things like that and we're like, oh, I don't want to do that. But then when you get into it, you know, it can be, like Miranda said, it can be really good. You think, what am I going to do for four hours? And then when it's over, you're like, hey, I want to keep doing this. So it's just unique to put yourself in these situations and challenge yourself. So they do challenge themselves in that aspect. Also, like physically on the ropes course, as you saw, they climb this big ladder um, and they do like a trust fall thing off of another platform. And uh, so there was 11 kids there from different churches in the early meeting, and uh, it was just a really fun time. But if you want to take the Bibles in front of you and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 3, uh, I'm just going to share a little bit kind of, of what, what caused Samuel School to come together and, and the scriptures that it's based off of and what it's um, about. So if you want to turn there, I'll read. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3. I've got my iPad up here. You know, I can't let Gil be the only high-tech one up here. So, you can, I'll, I'll read and you can follow along. This is um, the Lord calling Samuel in chapter 3. It says, The boy Samuel uh, ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lie down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not, net, did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not uh, yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, Say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lie down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling at all or calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about to tingle. Uh, at that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His son blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him in and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. What was it that was said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. So looking at this story, um, we have Samuel, who is getting called to by God, but as it said, he did not know, you know the Lord. The, the word of the Lord wasn't yet revealed to him. So he calls out to him three times, and every time he thinks it's Eli, he goes in and says, did you call for me? And he's like, no, I didn't call for you. Go back and lie down. Here's it again, comes back out, did you call for me? So God is reaching out to him, but he is unfamiliar with God's voice. He doesn't recognize God's voice, and so he's not understanding that it's God. 
And that's kind of what Samuel School is about, is like learning to listen for the voice of God and understanding what the voice of God sounds like so that when, you know, he is speaking to you, you can understand that and you're not um, mis misinterpreting it as something else. Um, this made me think of, this is what I thought of this time when I went to Samuel School. When I'm driving in the car with Leah, not that I don't understand her voice or that I misunderstand her, but sometimes I do. But um, I like to listen to classic rock, so like Bob FM or uh, whatever it is, 1071 K hits. Uh, that's the radio stations I like to listen to. And Leah does not really know, she didn't like grow up listening to a lot of classic rock or doesn't really know a lot of the songs. And so like one will come on and, and within the first couple of seconds, I'll just turn it up and be like, oh, I love this song. And she's like, what song is this? And I'm like, oh, you'll know it. Like once it gets to the chorus, you'll probably know it. And most times, sure enough, when it does get to the chorus, she does know it, but she doesn't know it like right from those first couple of seconds like I do. Um, and that's just because I've listened to them, you know, a lot more than she has or more familiar with them. She's familiar with the popular parts, like the chorus that might get used in a commercial or a, t or a movie or something, but she doesn't know it right from the beginning. So it takes her a little bit longer to be like, oh yeah, I actually do know this song. Um, and so that's what made me think of like, I can identify those songs most times right from the beginning and know what song it is just from like a first few notes and it takes her a little bit longer to figure it out. So, wouldn't be Youth Sunday without playing a game. We are gonna play a game here. So don't worry, you don't have to move or anything. You can just sit where you are. But you can write down your answers on your bulletin, find a blank space, or you can just be with the person next to you and tell them your answers and go on the honor system here. But two years ago, a little preface for this, two years ago, as a part of a year-long study conducted by the Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester uh, in the United Kingdom, users were directed to a special website where they could play an online game called Hooked on Music, which contained clips from a thousand hit songs from the past 70 years, the top selling 40 tracks of each decade since the 1940s. And it analyzed how quickly people were able to recognize certain songs, and it came up with what are scientifically, the 20 most catchiest songs of all time. And uh, so we're gonna play a few of those songs, not all of them, but we're just gonna play the first six seconds of each one, and we're gonna see if you can identify these songs that are scientifically the most catchiest or recognizable songs according to the people that took this survey. So I'm gonna play them on this TV right here. I've tested it, you can hear it, hopefully. That's it. All right, so you can look at your answers. I'll tell you what they were here. I won't just leave you in the dark here. Number one was Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. Rocky music, Rocky theme song. Number two was the one that I struggled with that I would have not got on my own. Anyone feel like they got that one? It was SOS by ABBA. 
Uh, number three was probably the newest on the list was Mbop by Hanson. Yes. Number four is what I would consider most iconic on the list was Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. Uh, number five was Karma Chameleon by Culture Club. Number six was It's Now or Never by Elvis Presley. And number seven was Candle in the Wind by Elton John. So those were seven of the most 20, according to this survey, according to this test, the most seven recognizable, easily, you know, recognizable songs. Just, and all of those songs, according to this test, all of them were recognized within two and four seconds. Like, um, and so some of those I played six seconds just to give a little bit more time, but. You know, like Eye of the Tiger, I kept it pretty much at three because I feel like that one's pretty recognizable. But, so maybe you did really good at that. Maybe you're like my wife and you would be like, I don't know what any of those songs are. <laughs> but uh, that just shows, like, all of those songs started, I mean, we, we cut them off before the words even started. Some of them, like the Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, all you got really was drums. And some people in the room were, were able to identify that song just by the drum beat in the first five seconds. And so that just shows either like how popular they are, how familiar with they are, you can recognize those songs instantly um, without even needing to hear the music, without even needing to hear the words. Like you can just hear that and go, oh, I know what this song is instantly. Um, if you weren't so good at that game, here's another example you can think of. Think back to the days of before cell phones when you would have to call someone on their house phone. I, I lived through those days as well. Don't worry, I'm not that young. Um, but I can remember, you know, having when you have to call your friend and you're maybe kind of nervous that, like, oh man, their parents are going to answer or whatever. And so you, you can even try to orchestrate it. Be like, tell your friend, hey, I'm going to call you at five o'clock today. So be by the phone, so I don't have to like talk to your mom or whatever. If, if you're kind of nervous or whatever. Uh, and I can remember doing that. I had a friend, and we, you know, we would call each other. And he had a brother that was a few years older than him, and. Uh, if he answered the phone, he would try to pretend to be my friend. He'd be like, yeah, this is Kevin. And I was like, okay. So I had to get pretty good at identifying, like, you know, the subtle differences in their voice because, I don't, you know, I'm just calling the house phone. Anyone can pick up, and I can just assume that it's my friend Kevin, but, um, you know, you don't really know. So you have to learn to hear their voice. Obviously, if I call and his mom answers, I can tell the difference between that. Um, but I just remember his friend, or his brother would always try to trick me. He was older and he was trying to, you know, mess around with us and play a little joke. So he would pretend to be my friend and sometimes that would actually get me until I started to catch on a little bit more. So, um, you know, now we have caller ID and we have cell phones. So if I'm gonna call my friend, I am calling his phone. So I don't have to worry about his brother picking up in most cases. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you think back to that time when you had to call, you had to learn people's voices, you would, you would know. And you might have that person in your life that you know, you can recognize their voice instantly. And some people, it's different. And it just depends how much um, time you've spent with that person. Like, you'll recognize those people's voices if you've spent more time with them. You'll recognize those songs if you've listened to them a lot growing up. But if you haven't, then you're not gonna know it. Maybe, like my wife, you'll know it as time goes on and it gets to the chorus, but you won't know it from the beginning. Or as you talk longer to that person, they'll be like, hey, this isn't my friend Kevin, this is his brother Richard playing a joke on me. But if you know that person really well, then you'll, you'll know their voice instantly. And so that's kind of what Samuel School is about, is, is getting kids to uh, recognize God's voice more quickly. Um, and in order to do that, you have to spend more time with them. Like, no one is born knowing how Billie Jean by Michael Jackson starts. You only know, you know, how that song is by listening to it a whole bunch and, and uh, you know, learning it and hearing the music. Um, you only know someone's voice by spending more time with them. You don't just instantly know someone's voice. And so that's kind of the purpose of Samuel School is learning to spend more time with God, whether that's four hours sitting by the man-made lake that they dug up there or spending time in scripture or in prayer. And so we even see here, uh, God called out to him, called out to Samuel three times and he didn't recognize his voice until someone came alongside him and was like, I think that's God, and, and kind of guided him into that way. 
So that's the purpose of Samuel School is to kind of get kids to listen more to God's voice, but to also have people in their life that can help them and guide them to, you know, recognize God's voice. And that's kind of the, the latter part of Samuel School is they get what's called an Eli. And so they get paired up with a, with a person at the church. Um, Miranda's Eli is Elisa Ferris put you on the spot there. So they'll meet, um, you know, throughout the year and, and get together and, and um, you know, have that, she'll have that person that can kind of talk with her and guide her. And maybe she says, well, I'm just wondering this. And Elisa can come alongside her and be someone who has a little more experience and, and more um, uh, maturity and can kind of talk with her about that. And so um, that's just kind of what Samuel School is about. I think it's a great program. Obviously, not everyone gets to go to it, um, but you don't have to drive all the way to Newburgh to sit alone for four hours, although it is a little harder to do that at home when you have all the distractions as opposed to being out in the middle of the woods with no TV and no computer or anything like that. But um, so to just close really quick, we're just going to do a, a time of open worship so we can all, it's not going to be four hours long, don't worry but uh, where we can sit for a few minutes and, and um, listen to God's voice. If you have anything that you feel um, you're being led to share with the group, I'll run you the microphone. And uh, then after that, after a few minutes, Jim, I think you're doing the offering. All right.